Hello everyone, my name is Steve Marsh and I am a Clarkson University instructor and certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt. I will be guiding you through the next module where we will learn about overall equipment effectiveness or OEE. Manufacturing statistics are often used to establish process metrics and OEE can tell us a lot about how a process is performing and where improvement is needed to maximize productivity. Let's take a closer look. By the end of this module, you will be able to define overall equipment effectiveness, calculate and interpret an OEE score, and use OEE to recommend process improvements and target scores. Overall equipment effectiveness is an industry standard method of measuring manufacturing productivity based on equipment availability, process performance, and product quality. A 100% OEE score implies you are producing only good parts in as fast a time as possible without any stoppage time. OEE is often considered the best heuristic metric for pinpointing losses, benchmarking progress, and improving performance of equipment. Process dashboards like the one shown here can be used by process owners to display OEE scores and other key performance indicators, monitor process performance, identify improvement opportunities, and make adjustments to optimize output. Now let's define the three fundamental factors used to calculate the OEE metric. Availability accounts for unplanned and planned stops. A 100% availability score indicates the process is always running during planned production time. Performance accounts for slow cycles and small stops. A 100% performance score implies that when the process is running, it is running as fast as possible. Quality accounts for defects, which includes parts that need rework. If the quality score is 100%, there are no defects which indicate only good parts are being made. Next, we will examine each of these factors individually. OEE availability is the ratio of runtime to planned production time. Availability takes into account availability loss, which includes any events that stop planned production for an appreciable length of time, usually several minutes or long enough for an operator to log a reason. Examples of things that create availability loss include unplanned stops, such as equipment failures and material shortages, and planned stops, such as changeover time. Changeover time is included in OEE analysis since it is time that could otherwise be used for manufacturing. While it may not be possible to eliminate changeover time, in most cases it can be significantly reduced. Reducing changeover time is the goal of SMED, or single minute exchange of dye. The remaining time after availability loss is subtracted is called runtime. OEE performance takes into account performance loss, which accounts for anything that causes the manufacturing process to run at less than the maximum possible speed when it is running including both slow cycles and small stops. Examples of things that create performance loss include machine wear, substandard materials, misfeeds, and jams. The remaining time after performance loss is subtracted is called net runtime. Quality takes into account quality loss, which accounts for manufactured parts that do not meet quality standards. Examples of things that create quality loss include scrap and parts that need rework. OEE quality is similar to first pass yield in that it defines good parts as parts that successfully pass through the manufacturing process the first time without needing any rework. The remaining time after quality loss is subtracted is called fully productive time. OEE is calculated by multiplying the three fundamental factors availability, performance, in quality. In other words, availability times performance times quality equals OEE. Now let's work through an example to illustrate how the OEE metric is calculated. Let's assume the following data is recorded over a production shift. The shift length is 8 hours or 480 minutes. There are two 15 minute breaks and one 30 minute break for a total of 60 minutes. A total of 47 minutes of downtime is experienced. The ideal cycle time is one second. The total count or production output 
is 19,271 units, and 423 of these are rejected. The OEE calculation begins with planned production time. So first, exclude any shift time where there is no intention of running production, typically breaks. The formula to be used is shift length minus breaks. In our example, 480 minutes of shift length minus 60 minutes of breaks results in a planned production time of 420 minutes. The next step is to calculate the amount of time that production was actually running or not stopped. Remember that stop time should include both unplanned stops like breakdowns or planned stops like changeovers. Both provide opportunities for improvement. The formula for runtime is to subtract stop time from planned production time. In our example, 420 minutes of planned production time minus 47 minutes of downtime results in 373 minutes of runtime. If you do not directly track good count, it also needs to be calculated using the formula total count minus reject count. In our example, 423 rejects are subtracted from the total production of 19,271, resulting in a good count of 18,848. Availability is the first of the three OEE factors to be calculated. It accounts for when the process is not running, both planned stops and unplanned stops. The formula for accountability is runtime divided by planned production time. In our example, 373 minutes of runtime is divided by 420 minutes of planned production time, resulting in an availability value of 88.81%. Performance is the second of the three OEE factors to be calculated. It accounts for when the process is running slower than its theoretical top speed, both small stops and slow cycles. The formula to calculate performance is the quantity ideal cycle time times total count divided by runtime. In our example, the ideal cycle time is one second. The total count was 19,271 widgets divided by a runtime of 373 minutes converted to seconds, resulting in a performance value of 86.11%. Quality is the third of the three OEE factors to be calculated. It accounts for manufactured parts that do not meet quality standards. Quality is calculated by dividing good count by total count. In our example, the good count of 18,848 is divided by the total count of 19,271 for a quality value of 97.80%. Finally, OEE is calculated by multiplying the three OEE factors using the formula stated previously, availability times performance times quality. In our example, the OEE calculation is 74.79%. To put this value in perspective, let's examine world-class OEE metrics. The nature of this calculation makes achieving a high OEE score quite challenging. For example, if all three factors are 90%, the resultant OEE will only be 73%. In practice, the generally accepted world-class goals for each factor are quite different from each other as shown in the image above. Note that these figures apply to discrete manufacturing as opposed to process industries. It's often thought that a world-class OEE score is 85%. Don't fixate on the absolute value of OEE. Instead, focus on your ability to improve your overall process performance. One of the major goals of OEE programs is to reduce and or eliminate what are called the six big losses, the most common causes of equipment-based productivity loss in manufacturing. A decrease in OEE value represents a loss in fully productive time. This can be attributed to losses in availability, performance, and or quality, which are typically associated with the following six big losses. Availability loss is attributed to unplanned stops and planned stops. 
Losses in performance can be caused by small stops and slow cycles, while quality loss is often caused by production rejects and startup rejects. Using the six big losses framework creates a concrete path to improve your OEE score. Working to reduce availability loss in the form of equipment failures and setups and adjustments protects you against preventable unplanned stops or downtime, as well as minimizes any planned stops. Addressing performance loss that results from idling and minor stops, as well as reduced speed, prevents small stops and slow cycles from accumulating. Finally, minimizing quality loss in the form of process defects and reduced yield reduces the number of unusable parts produced before and during steady state production. In all, the six big losses name and categorize problems that manufacturers face every day. Consistently working within this framework to take action, one loss at a time, will result in a consistently improving OEE score. So how should you go about setting an OEE target? Here's the bottom line. Set an OEE target that will drive solid incremental improvement for your process. Each OEE target should be a stretch target that is truly achievable, preferably within three or four months. Also, do your best to avoid comparing dissimilar processes and external OEE benchmarks. There is only one target that really matters, the target that will drive improvement for your process. This concludes our discussion of overall equipment effectiveness. Hopefully you have seen how manufacturing statistics can be applied to establish useful process metrics and drive continuous improvement. When you have reviewed all the information in this module, be sure to complete the knowledge check to test your understanding of the content and be sure to check out the additional development materials provided on the Moodle site. Thanks for following along and I hope you enjoy the remainder of this micro-credential.